Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks Video Tutorial Part 22. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to exclusively lock a set of rows using select query. As the top of the slide indicates, the solution is to use the lock request class. Uh, before getting into the solution, we'll have a look at what is the isolation levels are. Uh, so when a select query is getting uh, executed in the DBM, the what kind of uh, underlying locking behavior, like what kind of uh, locks can be acquired, uh, whether it can be shared lock or update lock or exclusive locks or uh, the lock granularity, whether a row level lock is enough or whether a table level lock should be acquired uh, and whether lock escalation can occur or not. So these kind of decisions are now taken only by the database manager. The isolation levels can mildly influence the locking behavior. So there are four isolation levels under which a particular query will run. So in our case, it is the select query that we are looking at. So when we run the select query with uncommitted read isolation level with, with UR class specified in the select query, it will obtain only a share mode lock. Uh, and uh, the significance of this isolation level is all the uncommitted changes will be visible to the select query. The second isolation level we are discussing is cousin stability isolation level. So in the cousin stability isolation level, uh, again, uh, it will obtain only a shared mode lock that too transiently. What it means by that is, uh, it's like a cursor getting positioned from one row to the next row. So when the query is positioned in the first row, the lock will be acquired. And when the cursor is positioned in the second row, the lock on the first row will be released. So this is how the way the cursor stability will uh, scan the table. So that is, again, it will obtain only a shared lock. Select query with uh, repeatable read is the third isolation level that we are looking at. It will also obtain a share mode lock only at the table level. Now all these three isolation levels when used with select query will obtain only a uh, shared lock. It is not going to obtain an exclusive lock or an update lock. Uh, that is what the scenario that we are discussing here. So the solution for this is to use the select query with re read stability uh, isolation level. Again, if you use only the read stability isolation level, it will again obtain only a share uh, mode lock uh, at the row level. Uh, you have to use the lock request clause along with the read stability isolation level. So what is the lock request clause? Use and keep share locks, or you can say use and keep update locks, or you can say use and keep exclusive locks. So when you say along uh, 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 with the read stability isolation level, when you include the lock request clause, it can influence and uh, the underlying locking will be either it will acquire an update lock or an exclusive lock as per what you are requesting okay if you use the share lock it is again the default uh, mechanism okay uh, it will acquire only a share lock so th the solution for us is to use the lock request class we will demonstrate this with few examples okay here a database is there a db test it has a table t underscore tab with some sample values like 1 comma a is the first record 2 comma b is the second record 3 comma c is the third record and so on till 10 comma j so it has total 10 records so let's first uh, execute the query select uh, id comma name from t underscore tab where id between 4 and 6 with your so i am locking only three records 4 5 and 6 okay now let's look at the underlying lock that is acquired for that particular application. So what I'm doing is db2 get snapshot for locks for application agent id 16. Okay. So you can see that here it is acquiring only the, see the mode is what is important. It is acquiring only a share lock. Okay. Let's now commit the transaction. And again, I'll, uh, so instead of UR isolation level, I will use CS isolation level. And again, I'm locking the records. Okay. Let's now uh, look at the locks that is acquired. Again, you are seeing only uh, the mode is only yes, which means it's only a share lock that is getting acquired. I will commit the transaction. And this time I will lock with RR isolation level. So which is repeatable read isolation level. Okay. Let's look at what is the lock that is getting acquired. So you can see here at a table level, a particular lock is acquired and that too the mode is again share okay so only share uh, lock is acquired even when you are using repeatable read isolation level let's commit the transaction 
now i will use rs isolation level read stability isolation level and i lock the records now let us look at the underlying locking so now you can see that uh, there are three row level locks that are placed so this is the first one again the lock mode is ns which means it's again a next key share again it's a share uh, kind of lock only so that is row 1 row 2 row 3 so on the table t underscore tab three rows are locked and the mode is again ns only when i'm using the rs isolation level okay and at a table level it has placed the intent share lock okay so this is the behavior now what we want to do is to use the lock request class to influence the locking behavior so for that i say with rs and say use and keep update locks like this i say okay now let us look at the lock see here again you will find that three rows are locked so three row level locks but look at the mode here u u means update lock has been acquired see here also and here also <coughs> so three update locks on that e three individual rows have been acquired so this is the behavioral change and one table level intent exclusive lock is also acquired okay so this is the kind of so individually at a row level we are able to request for update lock okay so that is the behavior okay now let us again commit the transaction here and we'll run the same query we'll say this time exclusive e x c l u s i v e exclusive locks so now we are again locking it but we are asking exclusive locks on those individual rows now let's look at whether we have been granted that see here at the table level intent exclusive lock is placed and three individual row levels you can find that it has been placed under exclusive mode right so three exclusive locks are there for three rows so that is the significance of this class <coughs> so what happens when you exclusively lock the records so db2 connect to test okay now i will say here db2 plus c So since I've exclusively locked the records, we'll run these uh, queries. Uh, we'll see what is the significance of exclusively locking the record. Okay. So you can see that I I can use UR isolation level and CS isolation level for reading the table, but since I have exclusively locked the rows, my RS isolation level and RR isolation level the queries are failing i'm just querying the same uh, table for the same rows like where id between 4 and 6 i'm just changing the isolation level in app 2 okay so in this case it is actually rolling back the transaction okay that is what the exclusive lock means so even if we are only using the select query with rs isolation level since the, we have requested the exclusive locks uh, it has obtained the exclusive lock it is preventing the other select queries from running if they are in rs or rr isolation level okay so this is the significance of it okay uh, that's it in this video tutorial thanks for watching please subscribe to my channel db2 luw academy uh, see you in next tutorial bye bye